29 minutes of footage yesterday. It was a busy day. It's gonna be a great vlog. Hopped in the truck to go do my shopping and I got a phone call on the business line, answered it, and it's a potential new customer. Uh, she was recommended to us from somebody she was buying produce from, asking about a delivery service and someone that could do, you know, small, small order, small deliveries, no minimums, that sort of thing, which is our specialty. It's what we, uh, it's, it's our, it's our bread and butter, if you will. And, uh, and so I got a meeting with her today, this afternoon. She's got six restaurants. So that would be epic if we could end the year landing a new account with six restaurants. So we'll see how the meeting goes. I'll keep you guys posted. I just got another phone call from another, uh, it was a one-time customer, really awesome lady. She's uh, got a really cool concept, um, taco, taco shop. I met her, she placed a huge order to do like all the recipes and do all her photos for social and her website, stuff like that. And then I just, I hadn't heard from her for months, right? Uh, we had gone back and forth a couple times about price on things and the availability. She was asking questions about stuff, but then just no more orders. And I thought, well, maybe she didn't launch. Maybe, maybe you know, the restaurant didn't go up and everything. Um, but I just saw her phone, her number, her, you know, caller ID pop up and I was like, oh! And I talked to her, she moved kitchens, she moved locations, she got a, a brand new kitchen, she got an inspection done today, and she's looking to place a big fat order on Thursday for a grand opening on Friday. So I'm like, yeah! So that's two, uh, you know, new customers today. Uh, I'm meeting with her tomorrow, I got the, the sushi lady today, and then Wednesday I'm going up Northwest um, to snag a few more potential customers as well that we've already been in talks with, we just need to like seal the deal and get them on board with, with ordering. So there's a lot, there's a huge, there's a lot of potential going on right now. Like a lot of, a lot of potential business and I'm like really pumped about it. So we're just like, let's gotta keep this ball, you know, ball rolling and get this momentum going and end the year on uh, a fantastic foot. Downtown Phoenix for a meeting with a potential new customer. They've got uh, a sushi shop down here on Adams first. has her company holiday party tonight and she is making her guacamole. So naturally, I brought avocados home, a couple of limes, and then you're just gonna use kind of some store-bought pico yeah. and then spice it up. Queen, queen of spices. I did buy the hot pico and a medium pico just because I was like, I wanna use hot, but yeah. I just bought an extra one just in case I didn't have enough. 
I would rather have more than not enough. Gotcha, gotcha. So normally I make the pico. Sierra will take a couple avocados and grab the pico and make guacamole with it. So this is kind of like the quick version of that. All right, so um, I'm catching up on some things on YouTube and uh, saw a comment from a viewer saying that today's vlog kind of gave her a headache and or um, was like motion sickness or something like that. The, the, today's vlog bothered her specifically uh, that she hadn't seen and noticed in the past. Um, so I, I, I was watching today's vlog and there's definitely some motion blur. I, I moved the camera really fast back and forth and I was doing a lot of walking POV shots and there's definitely a lot of motion blur because I shoot in 24 frames per second um, versus 30 or 60. And for those who don't know what that is, uh, basically it's it's the amount of frames that get snapped per second um, and film is shot in 24 frames per second. So you, you, the very cinematic feel that you get from a movie, that is because it is shot in 24 frames per second. Um, soap operas and a lot of TV is shot at 30 frames per second, right? That's like kind of the most, the most like neutral, most TV is that way. Um, and then there's 60 frames per second, which is your sports, your high action really fast frames you're getting a lot a lot of crisp images um, there's pros and cons for all three of them some require more light some feel unnatural because there's so much action going on that you're just like it, it just it looks it there's jarring for you at sometimes um, especially in like non-action circumstances um, and with 24 frames per second motion blur is the is the major con the issue and of course the iPhone is, it's computer based, right? It's, it's software based. So it's doing its best to, 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 to do the calculations. And so, you know, there's, there's times where I've noticed the iPhone just, it doesn't look as good as it should. Um, so yesterday's vlog had some motion blur in there. So I do apologize for that. Also two things I mentioned in the vlog that I wanted to point out. One, I was correct. The, the day I made the mass changes to all the vlogs, the next days when I posted, I noticed the first vlog that did not perform well. It was a basketball video and it just it did, it just flopped completely. Um, and then the next video was a DoorDash video and it also struggled to get it rampant up. So I think there was some correlation there when I did the mass edit and, and, and Google or YouTube had to re-index the channel and the videos that the videos kind of didn't, just didn't perform as well. The days, the times correspond. The other thing that I wanted to also mention is that I uh, watched some video, some review videos on the Insta360 Go 3 camera that I mentioned at the be at Best Buy. So I watched a couple, I read some reviews and watched some 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 reviews, but then I saw a couple videos where like reasons why I wouldn't buy this camera. And I'm glad I watched them because he pointed a few things out that I didn't know or didn't think about. And um, one is it doesn't shoot in 4K. Now that I shoot in this, shoot in 4K, all my projects are 4K and everything's at 4K. I feel like it'd be silly to take a step back. Uh, the second thing is, is for an action camera, this, the stabilization is not great. There is a stabilization mode like the iPhone and other cameras, but it dramatically uh, decreases the quality of the video. And you have to use a, the proprietary software that comes with the camera to import, convert the files and export them out to be able to use them in your video editing software. So there's a whole nother step you have to take if you use the stabilization, which kind of deters you from using the stabilization, but everyone said you have to use the stabilization because otherwise it's just too jarring if you try to walk around and do anything. Uh, for an action camera, that seems very odd. On that note, uh, one of the reviews I watched, he dropped his camera, it was sitting on the top of a backpack, and he went to pick his backpack up and the camera just kind of like flopped off and hit the ground, and it cracked the screen. This is an action camera, it's supposed to be like a GoPro, and it apparently is a very cheap, housing a cheap uh, case and no protection around the glass which is why he cracked it so he was again very disappointed on, the, on that this being an action camera. now that's not necessarily a, an issue with me because obviously i don't really drop my cameras very often um but again just more things to think about so all in all i think the insta360 go 3 looks absolutely amazing for the applications i feel like i just need to treat it like a gopro it is a tool in my tool kit for certain particular shots and applications. Not something I need, definitely not something I'm gonna use every day, not an everyday camera. With that being said, the more I've looked into the Osmo Pocket 3, that does seem like it, a camera that I could I could definitely use full time. Um, I still think there'd be a lot of opportunity for me to use my iPhone, but for, the, the, for a main camera, um, that's still more portable and accessible than the G7X, because I've also thought about just going back to G7X, which I think I'm going to charge it up and give it a go and maybe do some comparisons. Um, I think the Pocket 3 is a viable solution. Maybe something to look into, you know, 
January next year, Q1. For now, I'm happy with my iPhone. Also, uh, I was talking about in yesterday's vlog that vlogger I found named Sean King. Uh, he posted a, a new video today and I just wanted to see what frame rate he was using on the topic of frame rates. And uh, just, you know, checking this and that, I started working on here, but still having him play over here. And he's totally from the UK. He's not from Australia or New Zealand. I don't know. Like for whatever reason, the video that I was watching yesterday, the, the long one, I, c I couldn't quite tell talked a lot and there's a lot of noise of that and I was like ah oh, yeah Australian he, you know kept saying mate and a couple other things he said but this video you could totally tell not an Australian accent definitely a UK British accent just wanted to clarify that all right I put the last order in for tomorrow I'm calling it a night thanks for watching thumbs up if you like the video hit that subscribe button for more videos like this each and every day right here on the YouTube and I'll see you tomorrow